Another dumb talking heads. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Spring is right around the corner. We're itching to get out of our basement, out of the studio. And that's kind of a, a good theme of today's tip is, you know, how can we go into 2022 with, with a lighter load? Oh, that's there's so many awesome ways of doing that. I will say, out of all the things I'm going to talk about, I don't think a single one requires any money. Uh, Probably not. Probably, I would say that's a that's a good challenge. Lighten your load without spending any money. That's not the title of the video because I do have one that does require money. Okay. So today we're going to talk about some easy, quick things you can do to shave some weight off of your total pack weight. Just super easy things um, that you might not think about and some things we've kind of learned over, over the years. Yep. But first, remember, click, click that subscribe button. It's down there somewhere. Click that bell too if you want to know when we go live. We live stream a lot. Speaking of that, check out the podcast if you want to see us, you know, BS around with your favorite outdoors folk. And then also, uh, if you want to get yourself some sweet SBO merch, check out the merch store. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is what these videos are normally about, and we're gonna get all that off the table. It's like all the stupid stuff you can do to lighten your load, like shave your toothbrush whittle down your first aid kit. We have to honorably mention all that stuff. Uh, it, it doesn't really count, but get that out of the way. There are yeah. a, a bunch of uh, like, get rid of the packaging for your food. Uh, there's a bunch of little things like that, that like the classic, like uh, like cut your, cut your sleeping pad to three quarters. <laughs> Like there's a bunch of stupid ultralight hacks uh, that you can do to lighten your load and they will lighten your load. That's not the point of this video, but honorable mention to all the, what I call the stupid ultralight hacks, mainly the cutting your toothbrush and the, my favorite is when they iron your, their sleeping pad. I've done that. Really? Yeah, I did that. Oh, well, how much did that save you? Uh, a few ounces. Okay. It was, on, right. it, was hey. on, it was on an old Neo. Lighten your load. Iron your sleeping pad. Interesting. <laughs> uh, but we're going to get that out of the way. So the first thing that I would say you can easily do to lighten your load, and, and this is also kind of a misnomer because it's not going to lighten your pack load, but get some lighter shoes. Now, that won't, that won't decrease your pack weight, but they do say, and I did read this, and there is some value to this statement, that one pound off your feet is like 10 pounds off your back. <laughs> yeah, that, I've, heard, I've heard that from like a biomechanic standpoint because you feel weight on your feet way more than your back. So quick little one too, get lighter shoes, get trail runners, go crazy, get those sandals, those bedrock sandals, go barefoot. I, people hike in the sandals, I don't get that. <laughs> It's not for me. I would say in fair weather conditions, actually in all conditions, I, I would say one of the biggest contributing factors to carrying extra unneeded weight is clothing weight. Yeah, that, I had that on my list. And um, I will challenge everybody on here that your prop, most people are probably carrying more clothes than they need to be. Now, I get that it's different for everybody and like what types of like comfort you want and, and everything. But if you're someone that's just like looking to shave off some weight, you can probably find some opportunity in clothing carry. Like a lot of people like get to camp and they're like, I got to take off my hiking clothing and put on my camp clothing. I well, carry a pair. I carry a camp I, shirt. I, I know. Not and, a whole change of clothes. Right. And then people, you know, then, you know, you've got the camp shoes concept. I'm not hating on any of this. I'm just saying that there's weight opportunity savings there. Most people bring too many clothes. Yeah. This is what you need. You need a hiking outfit and a shirt to sleep in and an extra pair of underwear and an extra pair of socks. Worst case, that's what you need. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we start Maybe some insulation. That's about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is like three seasons we're talking about. Yeah. In the winter, you're going to need extra clothes, but most people bring too many clothes. For us, it's a hiking outfit, a camp shirt maybe, and then an extra pair of socks and an extra pair of underwear. That's it. And clothing's really heavy. I yes. mean, one little, one shirt can be like a half a pound. So that's an easy way to to skim off some weight. Yeah, yeah, and of course, like if you want to, if you want to drop some money, you can buy light. Like there are clothes out there that have some weight savings that have good mm -hmm. like technical features, such as like good for how much they weigh. They're decently warm and, and that type of stuff. Obviously, like ultralight down jackets, that type of stuff. But there's a lot of opportunity there, and you don't think about it. But I guarantee you, like. When you get home from a trip, a lot of these like weekend trips, like we do, you look at you're unpacking your bag and you look at all the stuff you took. There's and some they, clean clothes. There's in there. some clean clothes in there. Yeah, 
uh, on that note, another thing I want to talk about is food and consumable weight. I have yet, uh, you probably fall into this too. I have yet to have a trip where I have eaten every single thing I've brought. Yeah. And that is waste. And food weight is super, super heavy. So be conscious about your food. So a couple things. One, uh, you can strip down packaging. So things like mountain houses can go in freezer bags. Anything you need to rehydrate can go in freezer bags. That actually will save a lot of weight. Two, be a little bit more technical with planning out what you're going to eat every day. And then, you know, you can bring some extra stuff as a buffer, but I've had week long trips where at the end of the trip, I've got like four bars, some extra meals, coffee. I've got like almost a pound of stuff that I didn't eat that I just carried around all day for a week on end. And it was a total waste. And then in that same kind of vein, we used to carry, or I used to carry way too much water. I was just about to talk about this. Yeah. So water, uh, where we hike most of the time in the Midwest areas where it's not the desert, we have water and it's not 90 degrees. We only have to carry like a liter of water. I think we fall victim to laziness of not wanting to like filter water multiple times per day. So it's just like, I'm just going to load up on water in the morning for the entire day. And then, and then yeah, we did used to do that. And That's then we, terrible. And then we just carry, we carry like an, we carry like eight pounds of water or something crazy like yeah. that. And that, I mean, it, it's all dependent on where you're going, what the water situation is like. But it, for, for what you and I do, like most everything, we only need to be carrying like a liter of water at a time. Yeah. And one liter of water weighs 2.2 pounds. So if you're carrying two liters instead of one, there's two pounds you can cut off your pack weight right there. And we used to carry two liters of water around and it was just stupid. We had extra water all the time. So take a look at your food, take a look at how the food's packaged, take a look at what you're eating and take a look at how much water you're carrying and that, that you can crack down on your consumable weight and of your total pack weight on like a long trip, your consumable weight will probably be as much, if not more than your total pack weight. The next thing, Talking about consumable is just, um, you can switch out your canister stove for an alcohol stove. That might not even cost any money if you go to a can of cat food, but that's an easy way um, in terms of consumable weight and total pack weight. You can cut cut some weight off there. Alcohol is way, way, way lighter and cheaper than um, canisters for your stove. And alcohol stoves in general are way lighter and cheaper than gas stoves. So take a look at the food water situation entirely. And there are pounds and pounds of weight you can you can get at there. I'm going to, uh, my next one's going to be a little generalized too. And I'm just going to call it storage devices. And that's, Ooh, I had this on my list. That's yep. going to include a genre of items that include water bottles, stuff sacks, Stuff sacks, dry bags, Ziploc bags. Stuff uh, sacks is a big one. Yeah. You can cut that uh, weight out. Just like all the different storage devices that you will carry to maybe organize your gear. And I'm including water bottles in there because one, water bottles, especially everybody talks about that. We've talked about it. Some water bottles out there are very heavy. Don't and, get an algae. Yeah. There's it, a freebie tip. Yeah. <laughs> get a water, get like a water bottle from the gas station. But if you can combine, like if, if you have just a bunch of little stuff sacks because you like, a, like, crazy organization you can probably combine a bunch of that stuff you can you know obviously you can do like a garbage bag for like a liner mm -hmm. you don't need you don't necessarily need tons of different stuff sacks now i get like some people are crazy about organization and they like everything nice and neat and that's cool if that's you again the point of the video is like looking for opportunities to save weight i i think that there is like a lot of people out there, including us sometimes, that carry just like lots of little pouches and bags and Ziploc bags and, you know, and plus, you know, you, less Ziploc bags, less plastic. Oh, look maybe, at that. Maybe good a for the environment. Green argument. Yeah, yeah. Next way to easily, easily shave weight off of your setups and your total base weight. Now, this doesn't apply if you backpack solo, but most people watching this and most people in general backpack with at least one other person. And we're not going to get into the pitfalls that could come with this scenario because we've talked about that at length in our videos, but there are probably opportunities for you to share gear with someone. And the easiest things to share are a water filter and a stove. And you can cut that weight in half by someone not bringing it and you sharing one. Now, 
It's got to be careful. You got to be careful with that. And if, if it's just you and one other person, you know, if you only have one water filter, you might want to pack some like Aquamira drops with you or something. If the, sto if the stove goes, you can just eat crunchy ramen. That's not a big deal. Right. But if you do have one water filter for multiple people, you should have a backup. But like in our case, when we go with groups of three or four people, we don't need three water filters. We don't need three, three stoves. We don't need three cans of gas. We don't even need three cook pots. You can really, really be efficient if you have more than one person, even two people, you're good, good to go. And you can really cut down a lot of weight and it makes things a, a lot simpler. Um, if you just have like one stove and one water filter, it can be a lot simpler that way, but you can cut down cost and weight by doing that and just sharing gear with who you go with. But you know, you, you don't want to share gear with everybody. Yeah, you can get burned there. You might learn that lesson the hard way. We certainly have. So be mindful of that. But I would say certainly if you got like three or four people, you're good with one or two water filters. You're good with one, maybe two stoves. And you could probably, get, if you're using a gas stove, get the big can of gas there. And you can save weight that way. So be mindful with sharing gear, but it is a really easy, cheap opportunity to cut, you know, pounds off of your pack weight. What do you got? Uh, I'm just going to call it camp tools. Okay. And that includes knives, axes, saws, shovels, spades, <laughs> like all of the above. Who's bringing spades? I don't know. Oh, see, like this mili no, 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 oh, like this like military, a, like, like the, what, yeah. World War II, what the Germans had? Yeah, yeah like yeah. the saw blade. I see yeah. people with this. People have those. Yeah, They'll like survival those. shovels. <laughs> so first of all, just to you know b myth or bust some myths here it is possible to start a fire without a saw or an axe i just want it to put is. that out there it is and so it's not saw is pretty cool though i'm not saying so an hey axe. i again point of this video i'm not yep. saying that these items aren't cool and fun like chainsaws for example yep but i am saying we should do a video on how to Increase your pack weight <laughs> yes. relative to the amount of fun you'll have. Yeah, that'd be actually a pretty. How fun many pounds for fun yeah. do you get for unit fun? Yeah. Chainsaw is a lot of units <laughs> fun yeah. for a few pounds. Um, so, like in ideal, like for just talking about saws and axes, for example, like if the if if you're in air if you're in an area of the world where you're allowed to have fires, and it's a nice time of year, like maybe spring, summer, fall. You know, you may not need to be like sawing up wood. There's probably a lot of like twigs and downfall and stuff that you can just gather mm -hmm. on your own. Not if you're looking to save some weight, you probably can, you know, leave your fifth axe at home and maybe only take four axes or something. Nice. Four and, axes. That's yeah. a sacrifice. Yeah, that's a sacrifice. And then also, I always I always rant about knives. I laugh be, when I see like those people just carrying like machetes or like the bear grills knife, we see a lot of machetes. Yeah, weirdly. <laughs> yeah, and um, I will say, ninety nine point nine percent of the time that we use some type of sharpened blade, it is to open food packaging. Yeah, some of those food packages are difficult to open. Though. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it, but yeah. so like, don't always need the survival knife. You don't always need the machete, the machete, and you don't always need the parang parang whatever you probably just need a razor blade you probably just need a yeah. razor blade <laughs> so that good call you can get the cheese oven with the razor blade so another easy way that you can shave some weight off of your setup and this is something i have never done and this is something i don't think you've ever done is get all your gear together and go on a shakedown hike i've never done that i've never gone on a hike on a three, two, three day trip, then came home and dumped everything out on the table and gone through every single thing I brought and weighed whether I used it versus whether I needed it. I guarantee you, if I have, if I would have done that, especially earlier, I would have eliminated things in my base weight and gotten much more lighter, much faster. I never did that. You know, it was kind of a an evolution, a process of years and years and years of like, oh, I don't ever use this. Don't bring that. I mean, clothes was a big one, but I think doing a shakedown hike or just going out and then coming back and literally just take your pack and dump everything out and go through every single thing and think about, first off, if you're just starting, there's going to be a lot of stuff you take and never use. And then secondly, you can look at, oh, I maybe use this, but I didn't really need to, but I never did a shakedown hike. I don't think you've ever done a shakedown hike. 
I don't even know if that's the right term. Shakedown hike. Would that be like, would that be like, I'm going to go for a week in Colorado and to prepare for that hike, I'm going to do an overnight with the exact yeah, same yeah, gear yeah, yeah, I'm yep, going to yep, take. That's that what I'm talking. Mean? Yep. Yep. Uh, and then bonus points when you get back from the Colorado hike, do the same thing too. Uh, but yeah, that's what I mean. Like get your loadout ready, go out, use it for a night, maybe two, and then take a good hard look at like, what are the things I used versus didn't, and you're not going to use everything you bring. So th I think that I, I never did that. I don't think you ever did that. And it's a common thing you see. And I think it, it think it's got its place next, next thing. So everything I've talked about, literally everything we've talked about required $0. That's pretty impressive. First off, so the next few things are not zero dollars, but I come at this of, let's say you're, you're going to buy something and you have a choice between two things that are pretty similar and they might cost the same. This is an easy way to shave some weight. So a first, and this, this first thing is kind of obvious, but uh, we always talk about, especially if you're going with multiple people, you don't need paper maps. Most of the time, use your phone. You're gonna be carrying your phone anyway, but in terms of like this gear or that gear, like the Garmin Mini versus the Garmin InReach regular. Same price, the Garmin Mini is uh, a quarter of the weight. The next biggest thing now is for a lot of people, you can probably use a frameless pack. I think, and they cost the same as like a non, or a, as a framed pack. And I think if you're looking at 40 liters, 35 to 40 liters, which is gonna be perfectly fine for 99% of people, you can go frameless versus framed. Frameless is probably going to be about the same in terms of your quality of hike, and you'll save at least a pound or two there. Yeah, that's a good point. You just got to make sure your base weight can handle it. Yeah, assuming your assuming you can a fit everything you need into 40, 40 to fifty liters, and b you know you have a base weight that's not like ten to fifteen pounds, then I think you can make these choices that won't cost you any more necessarily, but take a pound or two off that. So things like the electronics, uh, you know, I use the Garmin inReach as an example and things like packs. Uh, and then you can extend that to things like quilts versus sleeping bags. You know, they're probably going to cost about the same. Most of the time give you the same user experience, but the quilt's going to be way lighter. So when you're looking at pieces of gear to buy, you can be tactical with how you spend versus the weight you get for that um, versus other options. That's another thing we've kind of learned, right? Yeah. Uh, and then gear is always getting better. Like the frameless thing now, like, you know, five, 10 years ago, we wouldn't think about getting frameless packs that we could take for four days at a time. But now we can do that. And 99% of people are going to be fine with a load that can go four days. So something to think about. Those cost money, but I'm one of the guys of like, you're going to buy a pack anyway and like maybe yeah. look at a frameless versus a frame or you're going to buy a, a quilt anyway and look at a quilt over a sleeping bag and, and like that kind of I stuff. I mean, that that applies, that like logic applies to everything. Even sleeping like, pads. It, that applies to headlamps too. Yep. I mean, you can get like, you can get super light headlamps with, with excellent lumens that are at the same cost, if not cheaper than like a heavier yeah. name brand. Yeah, we should do a video on that. Like these two things cost the same and are the same. And this one's way lighter. Be a good video idea. Mm -hmm. Don't steal it. All right. <laughs> Anything else? No, no. We got Spagiver on the horn here for the podcast. Check that out. Uh, that is it for for us down here. It is so close to being non-winter. It's not even winter. It's shoulder season right yeah. now, which is way worse than winter. We're getting back on the trail, but as this backpacking season unfolds, kind of use some of these tips, make your, make your load lighter, have a better time and don't, don't bring the ax or the machete.